What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Business Breakthrough. In today's episode, I sit down with Corey Winkle of Conscious Contractors, and today we talk about the most important and the best bet that you could ever make, and that is one that is on yourself to deliver. And it was a great business breakthrough. So if there's any of you out there that are hesitating when it comes to hiring or marketing, this business breakthrough is for you. What's going on, everyone? I'm here with Corey Winkle of Conscious Contractors. Um, you've been in business for 16 years? Yep. 16 years. Right. Now, what do you specialize in? What type of work do you do? Uh, right now, the majority of the work that I do is is door installations. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you do door installations, interior or exterior? Both. Okay. So somebody calls you, they want to, you know, obviously redo all their doors in their house. Um, you know, that's, that's who they call. Yes. What's, what's leaned you toward that specialty? All right. So I'll have to give you a, a quick little rundown of, of yeah. what I do. So, um, so the majority of what I do currently is subcontract work. And okay. so I have, uh, I have outlets that, that send me, I, I do measurements for them and they send me, send me the jobs. Um, and so subcontract work is, you know, something that brings in a consistent amount of work that obviously, obviously does it, you know, at a lower cost. Uh, and I think like, like a lot of, a lot of guys out there, uh, I kind of fell into this trap long ago doing, uh, I, I did granite countertops for the same right. kind of thing, doing subcontract work. And it, what I see now is, you know, basically they needed a, an easier employee, you know, so, so I just became an employee that was, you know, quote unquote, a business. And that's, and that's how, that's how your business started. Yeah. Okay. So what's uh, the big thing in your business right now that you're uh, battling, man? What's that one thing that you're trying to to figure out, you know, there's so many aspects of business. Can you narrow it down to one? So when you do subcontract work, and especially, you know, when you're one man operation that I have, I'm maxed out on time. I, I am, I am a slave to my job. Like you, like you say, you know? Um, so it's something that I, I've reached my capacity to, I don't have any more hours in the day and I need to expand. And so making that jump from, you know, just working, working by myself uh, to having an employee and expanding in into uh, other areas and, and be able to work when I'm not working. Sure, sure. So in 16 years, you had to have went through some employees or no? Yeah. So when I did granite work, I had to have employees, right? Because you can't pack out stuff on your own. Right. And so I... I did granite work for 13 years and I had employees then and, and that was, you know, that, that was fine. I, I ran like three guys at one time. And so I've, I've done, and I did it legit, you know, all the way through with workman's comp and, and insurance and, and all that, it, you know, every, everything was above board. Um, and when I, I, I was actually in a, a uh, fatal car accident in 2013 that I just, you know, driving home one day and randomly a guy hit me in, in my lane, just in the blink of an eye. And it kind of flipped my world upside down. And wow. so I, I had a massive uh, reshift to, to, you know, just, just kind of, <laughs> it, it shook my world up. And, and so I, I stopped having employees and at the time I could afford about a $12 an hour guy, uh, which gets you, you know, $12 an hour guy who could pass a background check. And that gets you a guy who's, you know, 18 to 22. And along with those 18 to 22 year olds comes with 18 to 22 year old problems. And I had had so much of, you know, dealing with those, those young men that, um, I just want to work by myself. And so, you know, for the last it's seven stressful. years, I've been, I've been having employees, listen, having employees is stressful because, for someone who's used to only thinking about themselves in terms of what you need to do that day, what needs to be done, how it needs to be done, where it needs to be done, when it needs to be done, you're usually working with your head down, right? Like you usually have your head down and when you bring on somebody, it's kind of weird because not only do you need to think about what you need to do, you need to give them direction. You need to give them uh, you know, uh, 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 you got to fill up their day with things to do. Right. And it has to be to your standard, your quality and all that stuff. That's stressful, isn't it? 
Yeah, absolutely it is. You know, especially again, because you know that you could do it. So it's like, why am, and, and there's this constant battle. It's like, should I bring someone on? Should I not? Do I want a life where I trust someone to do this work? Can they do this work? How am I going to find somebody to do this work? I mean, these are questions that I asked myself at one point, and I know so many people do. Um, and it's important to think about that for a second because, uh, you know, th those those questions could, could lead you astray. And, and we want to make sure, you know, that you, you know, I want to make sure that you know that you already did it. It's just, I think if you had the right people, in place, I think this would be a different conversation. You know, I think it was just a matter of obviously wrong time, some, something crazy happened. And, and, you know, the, the, you know, if it was the right person, you probably would have figured out a way to make it work, even though you were dealing with what you were dealing with. Maybe it was just like, this was the final straw. You had enough to deal with, with that accident. And the people you had were bringing you stress and you're like, I need to cut stress out somewhere. I'm taking away the employees. Is that what yeah. happened? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So we got to, yeah. we got to, we got to figure out a better system on how we bring in people into your world. And I like that you had the standard of workers comp. I like that you had the standard of payroll. I mean, those are all great things. And I know that we're not even going to talk about that. No point. Really what the point is, is first of all, if someone comes into your world, is it going to be a place where they can grow? Right. And that only gets dictated whether or not you are prepared to grow. So my question to you is, are you prepared to grow this business? I, I, I am prepared to, to grow this business. And, and just to, to catch up a little bit, I, I'm, a, I'm a 201, 301 student of your podcast, man. I, and we, you and I have had this meeting a hundred times before because <laughs> I, I listen to your podcast and I, I just apply the logic, you know, your logic patterns, you know, that you run through with all of your other clients and I go, you know, how, how is that here? And so, you know, so we've all, we've already had a bunch of these meetings and um, <laughs> it hits and a little different when I'm talking to you directly though. It, it absolutely does. Uh, but what so, I want to, but, so, but before you go any further, what I want to make sure that you understand is, is that hearing, hearing it is one thing, but actually mm -hmm. taking the action to it is the biggest, biggest, that's the biggest factor here. I probably have done over 150 sessions just like this. Maybe 10% okay. of the people actually take my advice, even though during the session, they're nodding their head, confirming that I'm correct and affirming that they're going to take the advice. Now, my question to you is, and, and I want to ask you, the advice I give, are you prepared to take it and take action on it? I, I absolutely am in, in, and when I say that we've had had this meeting before, I, so where I'm at right now is I have I've got a guy, I, I've got a guy who I've been I've been chomping at the bit. He's a friend of mine. He's been working for another construction company that's dissolving, and this guy is just a, an amazing, phenomenal craftsman. And so I, come January first, the this guy's gonna gonna start coming to work for me, and so I I. I'm going to start them off at a, a good rate of pay. Everything's going to be done with uh, payroll through Gusto and all, all of that. And so I, I, I'm setting up the machine so that, so that everything can have a great foundation to be successful going forward. Okay. And then, so really, really where I am trying to wrap my head around is, is niching down because I I've done, I, I do probably 70% of my work is doors and then the rest I do kind of, uh, remodel, you know, general, general contracting, which, is, which is a terrible term. I, I know you hate that term. Uh, and, uh, but I, I try to keep it to a limited scope. Yeah. And so I'm trying to figure out how, how best to utilize this, this craftsman that I have. And the goal is, is, is to get him, get another guy as soon as I, as soon as I can get the workload so that I can hire him a helper. Yeah, absolutely. So you're heading in the right direction. My thing was make him a manager, give him somebody to, to give him some leverage when he comes in. That's an upgrade different than where he was before. We, we, I know you heard me say this because you want it to be an upgrade and you're the, you're the, you've got to understand that you're the visionary now. See, the problem is with a lot of individuals that have their head down, they're working. They don't have time to be a visionary. Now you do. Now you have the ability to be a visionary of what you want your company to look like, what you want his day to look like what you want 
your your culture to look like, what you want the 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 atmosphere and how your customers to perceive your company to look like. My biggest concern right now is your marketing. Um, that is my biggest concern because that's a pain point for a lot of people. Chances are you needed four jobs to keep yourself busy every month this year. Um, every once a week, right? You needed four jobs. That'll give you enough money to make money for yourself, save a little bit for the business, move on to the next job. Is that correct? One job a week? Uh, so, so this is really the difficult part. And I, I think there's a lot of guys in my situation is it, I do, I do subcontract work, right? And, and so I get this subcontract work that it's fed to me. It, I, I could fill my schedule up, you know, seven days a week around the clock with, with this subcontract work if I wanted to. And so I think a lot of guys are in the subcontract position and they're like, how, how do I go from doing the subcontract work to a retail customer? So if I have X amount of time to devote to subcontract work, it, but I want, I want to be able to f fulfill more. What I've been doing is taking on work and being like, ah, I, I don't know where, I don't know where I'm going to put this. I'm going to take this thing on. And then I'm freaking out trying to figure out how to jam more hours into the day. And, and so, so making this jump from subcontractor to a direct to con consumer while, while keeping the ship afloat, you know, paying the bills and, and that well, you kind need of thing to is, see it as you're not making a shit like, like that, 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 pattern of thinking is going to stress you out because you're not going from one to the other. You've just got to recognize that some subcontract work is just like a lead source. And that's all it is. I mean, you know, it's, 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 you know, you probably heard me say that it's like lead sources is like stocks. So in other words, like you're just investing in that lead source way too heavily right now. And you're going to try to diversify your, your business portfolio of how you find work. Right. So like, you know, it's a slow transition. You don't need to just flip from one to the other. I think it's smart to have that in your back pocket because many people fear that they can't keep their team busy. You know that at any point in time, you're going to be able to keep your team busy. And chances are it's because your prices are pretty low in comparison, because mm. usually in, in the subcontractor space, you know, there's not, you're not, you're not hitting homers. So with, with the direct to consumer, you know, that offers you room to grow because they pay a lot more it's a different experience and you know that that's the direction you want to head in. That's why I said my concern is your marketing because you know, you, you, you have the mindset of, okay, I'm going to hire this guy and I'm going to get him a helper. My thing is, is I haven't heard you say anything about what you're doing on the marketing side because you need to be doing them at the same time. Right? So we, you know, the, the, the phrase is dig your well before you're thirsty. You don't want to wait until he comes on to market. Cause there's a feedback loop that has to occur. That's going to take probably till February, especially in the beginning of the year for you to get jobs booked in that, in that direction. Now I know that you have subcontract work and that's fine, but again, you want to start getting reps in with doing estimates for homeowners. Cause you're going to have a lot more free time. Now you're going to be able to break away and actually go do a presentation and not feel rushed and have people working there. Um, that's number one. Number two I think you need to get the helper sooner than later. I think that should be something that you should hire now to work alongside you, right? Because what you want to do is set him up with the helper immediately. There's going to be enough money there and you don't need to be worried about making money right now. Your, your, your focus is building the business. Like with drip jobs, my, my software, let me give you an example, okay? I've made three major hires, which means the company's making nothing, <laughs> you know, like, and, and, and that's, that's the mindset that you have to have. Cause I know that those hires are going to generate a smoother business. They're going to generate more income. Right. So for me, it's like, get, get that mindset of like, it doesn't matter. As long as you got some money to take care of your bills and necessities, don't worry about making profit, just stack the deck. So when you are ready and those homeowner requests start to come in, you're not scrambling around to find somebody to come in and help this guy. Right. Do you agree? Do you agree with that? I mean, is that, is that, is that a, a good step? Yeah, it, it is a good step. And it, it, it's something that I, you know, I've been, I've been stuck in this analysis paralysis for so long of, of making that jump from zero to one. And, and so I, I, I've wrapped my head around the, the zero to one. And well, you have time. So now you it, have time now because it's December 6th and that guy's not starting till January 1st, right? Yeah. You know, it would be yeah. wise to at least get some applications in for that helper role, that 14, to, don't do 12 again. You want 14 to 16, you know, uh, for a helper. 
um, and, and just prepare for January 1st, let them both start at the same time. You know, um, I think that, you know, by doing that, you're going to even be more motivated to do what you're doing. And let me, let me be clear. You can totally afford an extra 14 to 16 on any job that you do. That'll be more than enough to cover the helper, um, during this trial period anyway. And, and what I'm saying this yeah. is because you need to bet on yourself. That's like the, that's, that's the phrase for you today is you've been in business now for 16 years. You are seasoned. You are a veteran. You understand this game. You are not by any means incapable of having a million dollar company. The only thing that you need to do is turn on the ignition. Now you need to hit the switch. You need to say, you know what? I'm okay with failure. I'm okay with, with failure and be okay with it. It's okay. Like it, it's, it, you're not going to fail because you you've been doing it for so long. I mean, so you have reference points in the back of your head that you don't even know about that you would exercise in the event that you didn't have work, you would be able to find it. I just can, I just know that from being a 16 year veteran, holding yourself well, being able to draw on your references and contacts that you've made. So in other words, you have a hedge against the, the, the fear of not being able to keep two guys busy. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it does. And and this the subcontract work is something that I have an excellent relationship with uh with the company that I work with and it is is a company that, that I plan on working with for or working with indefinitely. Uh it they they hold the same morals and and, and can and I make a point as, here? As it would be fine if you continue to work for that subcontractor company by yourself while those two guys are working the residential side in the beginning. This way, okay. you are now generating two sources of income, which gives you even more confidence to ensure that those guys are good. Okay. There's a six-month grind period of doing things like that to get the momentum to kick in where leads come in, those guys do the work, you do the sale. Leads come in, those guys do the work, you do the sale. Leads come in, those guys do the work, you get the sale. Add another guy. Now you got three over there. Leads are coming in. You do the work, you know, you get the sale. Like you guys, you understand that there's like this six month yeah. period of like craziness. And that might require you to do some jobs on the side to just make sure that cash flow is coming in, especially in contracting. You heard me say this, the cash flow is slow. You know, you never know what you're going to get into with contracting. So in other words, you could be waiting two weeks to get paid when pay is supposed to be weekly. Okay. You know, so these are things that you need to be game planning about before you enter into this. And I want you to enter into this without without hitting any roadblocks. So you got to think of them beforehand. So, so one thing that I, I would like your input on is in, so like high end finished carpentry is, is really where I would like to like my company to go the direction I, I would like it to head. And, and so outside of that, there's going to be deviations from that. So, you know, I, I'm in there and I'm, I'm do, redoing somebody's trim and, and windows and, and this kind of thing. And, and they're going to want me to build a cabinet for them, you know? And, and so like down the rabbit hole you go and, and good customers will try to get you to do everything in the house. Right. They're like, Hey, I like these guys. And so what I'm trying to figure out is where, where I stop the buck at to go, you know, do I, do I hire a subcontractor to come in and do the painting or do I do the painting myself? And how, like how you, far into the so, weeds? So when you go I, out, I to, when you go out to a nice restaurant, they usually hand you a piece of paper. And that piece of paper yeah. indicates everything that they do. It's called a menu. You got to have one. Yeah. What, that's it. Yeah. And you stick within those parameters yeah. of the menu. Anything outside of that, if you have the resources and the means to get done by way of subcontracting and you feel comfortable and you've built a relationship with that individual and it's something that can keep your customer happy and also give you a little extra cash uh, to, to, to stimulate the business. The thing is, is that this new transition you're making January 1 should be all about protecting mm -hmm your employees. That's it. It should be protecting the morale. It should be protecting their energy level. It should be protecting their growth and keeping them hyper-focused. Think of the horses with the blinders on and they're racing. That's how you got to think of your employees. The minute you add a curveball, they're going to turn like this. And then guess what? You're going to be off track. Okay. We need to yeah. create something on the right-hand side here with these two guys that Hey, these guys just do this. Anything outside of that that maybe you can do, take it on. Let them focus on that one thing that is, that is, and you probably heard me say this in a, in a previous podcast, easy to market, easy to sell, easy to produce.
those three things. If, yeah. if, if whatever you're telling me does not fall into one of those categories, then we're in trouble in terms of building a sustainable business. Now, when you say high-end finished carpentry, now I know you said that you brought someone on. Do you feel as though that person's adequate to do anything that you can on the job? I absolutely. And, and probably better than me. Love at, it. I was hoping that most. you'd say that. Perfect. So in other words, great. He had, he needs a helper, especially someone to hold the crown up to even paint. You know, you might want to add painting whenever somebody, uh, uh, hires you for crown molding, dude. You don't want them to have to go get a painter. I think you can work that in, especially for that helper role, you know? So you're actually allocating what that helper role menu looks like. Okay. So as a helper to a finished carpenter, what would be the things that that helper would do? Okay. Right. So he mm. needs to learn how to caulk. Yeah. He needs to learn how to putty. He needs to learn how to paint. Okay. He needs to learn how to hold crown. Maybe he even learns how to use the nail gun. Okay. Cause really all you want your finished carpenter to be doing is cutting the boards. You know, I mean, that's what he's, that's the skill, you know? So it's like, you got to be thinking like, okay, if, if you were applying as a helper to conscious contracting, wouldn't you want something to at least let you know, like the things that you're going to be responsible for would, that would be pretty valuable. Right. Yeah. So, so even if you don't have the time, which I think you should to create something like that, you at least need to know at the very least you do as the business owner, you got to know, Hey, these are the things that I want this person to do. And then this way you can validate what that person's getting paid. And then, you know, hopefully the goal would be is for that person to be trained by the finished carpenter that you hired and eventually take on some of the responsibilities. Maybe he, he does some of the cutting. Maybe he learns some of these things. Okay. And what you're looking for when you're making those hires is somebody with a teachable spirit, somebody that's eager, somebody that wants to learn. And you're asking these questions, okay? Because ultimately what you want to do is you want to start building these finished carpenters from within because you, you know how hard it was probably to find this guy, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Matt, I mean, you're, you're going to have to do the same thing again if you want to grow. I mean, right now, I mean, although you found somebody, you're, you're looking for a serious skill set here, you know? And they have to check all your boxes, whatever those are, you know, whatever you value in a person. So again, the best thing you can do is in that helper role, you need to be thinking of that person as an apprentice rather than just somebody holding boards. We want to get them learning how to paint, how to putty, how to caulk. We want him to be the right hand of uh, that finished carpenter. Okay. And that, that, the reason why we're doing that again is to take the pressure off of you when you start to grow and start to build. Now, in terms of your menu of what you're going to be offering, you know, look, you're, you're, you know, you know, I say this when I hear contracting, I mean, that just means everything. I mean, and then that's, you can't really scale that unless you're building homes because they come to you to build homes and delegate all the subs right now you're a sub and the delegation portion of your business is very minimal. Maybe it's painting or maybe it's like flooring if you don't want to do the flooring. Right. Yeah. So in other words, the market's going to be a little confused. Okay. And, and I would yeah. be confused. Like, again, I would love to work with you as a, as a consumer. I'm a good consumer. I want to pay for you. I want you to come to my house and do work. How would I find you? And I don't know what you do. I just know contracting and to the average consumer, we're not used to working with contractors in any capacity outside of building a home. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, we need and to make it, that, some, that's a good point. We need to make it, some decisions. Something that it, so with so with this name, this conscious contractor is a, is a name that that I'm moving into. It, it's something that that just just kind of freshly registered this, and I'm trying to figure out if this is something that I have conscious contractors as an umbrella, and then have a DBA underneath it. Once I once I do niche down into you know that absolutely con conscious carpenters, you know, residential uh, remodeling, home remodeling. You base this name off of search terms, bro. <laughs> that's yeah. the, that's the economy we live in as much as, you know, we want, what are people going to look up when they want it done? You know, conscious home remodeling, conscious residential remodeling, because what it's going to do is going to give you favor and free money. Okay. <laughs> that's what yeah. it's going to do. When people need a painting contractor, if my company was called premium contracting, we may do painting, but to, the average consumer, they're not going to recognize this right off the bat. And I tell people this, it's like, you know, you got to be, you got to identify yourself as a specialist. 
You're not going to go to your dentist if you got a bellyache, right? So you, yeah. you go to the dentist because yeah. they, they work on teeth. When your house, your house, think of your house as like a body. So the average person understands that they need to go to a specialist for each individual thing. When it comes to, again, I'm just trying to help you on the marketing side, because as you grow this thing, you're going to start getting organic, you know, organic is, is a big part of a business. You know, eventually you're going to want to stop spending money on marketing and you're going to start want to start wanting to, you know, obviously relax a little bit on that cost and get organic business. And right now with your name, it's going to be hard. Hey. I, th thank you very much for that. It, again, it, it's one of those things that hits differently when when I'm speaking directly to you. Uh, but it, but yeah, just ha having this having this umbrella as conscious contractors, and then have you know, and that's it, fine. Keep the umbrella, and then have a DBA under it. it. That's totally fine. It's just a matter of what's on your marketing, man. It's like you just want to make sure that if the average old lady who wants it done is mm -hmm. looking, she can find you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wonderful. So um, in terms of in terms of the marketing going a little deeper, if I asked you, if I tasked you with this, if I said, I want you to go find a job right now, what would be your first step? I mean, the, the, there's there's an abundance of, of avenues out there that, you know, lead generators that you can tap into. You know, I'm talking they, right now. That, I'm talking if I said on this call, I want you to find a job. That doesn't, that's not a contractor oh. job. That's a home, a home remodeling job or, or a qualified lead. Uh, so yeah, qualified is a difficult part. So you can like some tax is some tax, something that you can turn on pretty quick and, and, you know, get, I find that you get tire kickers with that. But even as I'm saying this out of my mouth, I, I do understand, uh, it, you know, that this is just a customer is just an opportunity, right? Like that's right. all you're looking for is the opportunity to, to put yourself in front of somebody. That's right. But yeah. So yeah. thumbtack, so okay, that, so, that would be so the, you're familiar yeah. with these lead generators. That's good. Um, sure. So so what we need to do is we need to, you know, scale back a second. We got to go back to our menu, okay? And our menu is like, okay, what is it that we offer? All right, easy to market, easy to produce, easy to sell. And in those, in, in that capacity, is it easy to sell door replacement? Do you feel as though that that's a, a very in-demand service? You know, I'm it, not talking contractor world. I'm talking home because we got to switch gears. I'm talking average right. consumer. Because what does okay. the average consumer do when they need a new door? What do they do? They go to Lowe's or they go to Home Depot and right. they go and look for a door, right? Right. Hard, hard to market. Right. So th this is, I think this is how you turn so many people into painters, man, <laughs> is, you know, <laughs> is, it, inside of the, turn inside a lot of, of people into painters, man. It's, it's obvious. I mean, it's a good service. It's easy to market, easy to sell, easy to produce. Um, but that doesn't mean, right. listen, listen, here's, here's, here's where I'm going with this. Okay. You need to be a, you need to be a finished carpenter specialty in terms of uh, crown molding, baseboard installation, mm -hmm. flooring installation. Those are your big three. Okay. You don't need to be a painter. I mean, I don't think you, you even like painting. Probably not. Okay. So, so, but those three things, easy to market, easy to sell, easy to produce. Okay. That's it. Start there with this new crew. Okay. Because what it's going to happen is, is that on Facebook, the before and afters that you could put out on Facebook are going to engage people to inquire about you. Okay. And a flooring estimate starts off as a flooring estimate. And then what do we do in a flooring estimate? I know you've done floors, right? Yeah. So what do yeah. we do? We look at the crappy baseboards and we say, Hey, you know, those baseboards could probably need an upgrade. Let me run them up my car real quick. And I'll show you a new five and a quarter baseboard and I'll hold it up here and you can see what it looks like. How easy is that to sell? Yeah. And then, and then you got to match, then you got to match the turn around the doors. And then, are yeah, you and then you those, match the trim in the doors, doors, right? Now yeah. you're selling trim and doors and you say, listen, <clears throat> I know we've, we've, we've hit you pretty hard today, but I really want this to look as best as it can. Your house is beautiful. Have you thought about crown molding? <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. The, this is easy to market, easy to sell, easy to produce. It could be duplicated. You've got to make a change here about how you go about business again, because you've been doing this for so long. So although it's going to be hard for you to deny that cabinet to be built 
although it's going to be hard for you to deny some of these things that are easy. Remember, we're working for our employees right now when we make this transition. We want their life to be easy. They are not us. They don't have a stake in the company. So we need to work for them. How can we make your carpenter's day as easy and as systematic as possible? That's the focus. Now, yeah. again, you have the luxury right now to do whatever you want on the side. And here's a rule that I'm going to give you. This is one of those action things that I said, take, take this advice. When you find jobs for those two, because I need you to find somebody before January 1, a helper, you are not allowed to work on that job. Like you, you don't Oof. pick up a tool. Yeah. And, and he made a really good, whoof, as in that's going to be tough. But I'm telling you, this is one of those things where if you take my advice, you'll understand. You are not allowed to pick up a tool. You can go and supervise, but you are not allowed to pick up a tool. You told me this guy was just as good, if not better. So he should be fully capable of doing whatever needs to be done. You got to get comfortable with giving him instructions, giving him guidance. You are now the CEO. Picture yourself as the CEO that comes in with a tie. You don't know how to do these things. And you have put people in a position to get them done for you. You have to make that transition and try it on one job. And what that's going to do is it's going to empower your team because they don't want to hear from you. <laughs> like they don't want you to do their work for them. Like they, they, that's like, imagine that you, you, you get tasked as the manager of a project. And the next thing you know, the owner's coming in and that helper that at one point looked up to the manager as his superior is now forgetting about the manager and now looking up to you as the owner. And that takes away some of the credibility that maybe the project manager that you just hired built with the helper. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It so, does. so I know it's going to be tough. Do you think you could do that? Yeah, it, it's something. It's something I got to be got to be real honest with myself. And I think that this is a. a so I read the email after after hearing you suggest it to a bunch of people, and it, it's something they speak about a lot. You know that business owners are frustrated technicians, and and this is something that. I, I love, I am an absolute craftsman. Like my, I, my heart and soul identification is as somebody who loves to create precision, beautiful work. And I love to make, you're going to love provide that service. Also, you're going to love being able to teach because listen, I love to sell, bro. Like you like to be a craftsman. I love to sell, yeah. dude. I love it, bro. I mean, I, you put me in a house, I'm leaving with a check. That's my mindset. I put you in a house, you're yeah. leaving my house beautiful. It's the same thing. We both have those passions. I had to give it up. And I had to give it up because I, I was at capacity. I had to give that roll up. And the same way, even with drip jobs, like I love doing demos. I love doing onboarding. I'm at my capacity. It's time to give it up because I understand that ultimately I'm most valuable as a leader of an organization rather than a, a piece of an organization. That's my responsibility to the people that work for me is I got to lead us. You know, and not everyone can do yeah. that, bro. But you have to adopt that as your new role. Um, and that doesn't mean you can't teach, you can't guide, and you are a part of that that process. But you're taking what you've learned and you're giving it to someone else. And I think you're going to find just as much enjoyment out of that. And doesn't mean you can't help. I'm just saying I'm giving you a challenge of the next job. I don't want you to touch it, just to see how that dynamic works. Okay. Now, here's the thing: the purpose of this talk is, is to get your next job in a box, right? It should be a flooring job or it should be a crown molding job or a baseboard job. Okay. The first job in January is January 3rd. Have you found a job for that slot yet? I have. Yeah. What, what job is it? What's his first job? It, it's, it's a, it's a basement build back. It, it was a, a basement that had suffered, you know, some water intrusion. And so it, it's going to be, it's sheetrock, painting, floor insulation, trim insulation. So it's the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. And are you confident that if this person were on that job by themselves, they could do what needed to be done to make the customer happy? He, he's not a sheetrocker and he's not a painter. And, okay. and so that's, that's something... I think, Is that something I think that you, you can handle do you, the, do you do the sheetrock? Yeah. Okay. It's not something that I enjoy. Do you see how, do you see how messy this is? Do you see how, because you yeah. took on this, this big project here, now you got to be there. 
Now, do you see yeah. how if you could have been like, okay, I'm going to take care of everything else but the sheetrock, you got to find a sheetrock guy. How easy yeah. it would have been. You know, that's, yeah. that's the mindset. And, and you, some people are mm. fearful that the customer will be mad at that. But guess what? You're taking 75% of what they need done. And you're saying, hey, go find, I need, and I don't know if this is from a contractor or not. I think it's from a contractor, right? That this is this is actually a, a previous client of mine who okay. you know sweet little old lady and and uh, has is having a difficult time finding vaccinated people to work in her home and and has a husband who's done so, who's well. So and, how and, so how about so how about this? Okay, would it be out of the water to have you find a drywall guy to go do it so you can avoid working on this job with your hands? That. That's not out of the water. And, I, and I've, I've tried to make contact out see, there I just to, want you to, to actually see make that thing happen. But do yeah, you see yeah every no, time I, I, I see this. Do you I see, see how every time I, 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 I say something like that, you're, it's hard. I know it's hard, but like, this is what's going to break you from the cycle that you've been in for 16 years into a new world of feeling in control, feeling empowered, feeling like you're moving in a positive direction. Anything that makes you go yeah. like that means that's the thing that you need to do. And that's how I've learned in business. Yeah. I've done things that do, listen, I, I mean, it was hard. I mean, I, I want quality too. I mean, it was hard for me not to, to be on the job, to let someone else manage my job. I just called them a lot. I was just there checking in on them a lot. It was hard, but I had to do it in order to grow or else I was going to be stuck on the job. And that, that can't happen for a growing business. So I know that like that, that might seem crazy, but like you need to do that. And part of what you should be doing is lining up a hire for January 3rd to start along with this guy. So you go to that first job, you can have a team meeting in the morning. Isn't it different having a team meeting with two other people instead of one other person? Yeah, it is. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> it is. And wouldn't that other guy be impressed? Like, damn, he's on it. Yes. Yeah. Aren't all those things worth whatever it is that's going to be required of you to take care of business? It, they absolutely are. It, and this is, this is very, very illuminating to me that my, you know, going from zero, zero to one seems like, like that just, just got to get one thing. But I, but going, I, I think, I think what really what I extracted out of this call is, is that I, I need to go zero to zero to two or, you know, at least zero to two. I, I think that it's actually a, a better jump to go zero, zero to, to two, two zero to one. Zero to two means you're serious. Zero to two yeah. means that, uh, that, that you're, you're ready to rock. And, uh, I'm yeah. going to leave you with that, man. I think we're going to cap it here. Cause I really like to, to jump back on with you again at some point in the future, maybe after January, you update me on what's going on. And, uh, dude, I, I just want to thank you for all the listening you've done, uh, on the podcast. I could tell you listen, cause there are some things that I was about to go on tangents on and you stopped me because you already know. Uh, and that means that, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to apply this stuff. So was this helpful today? Absolutely, man. I, absolutely. Right. And uh, I, I'd appreciate the, a reach out so that I can get set up with Drift Jobs as well. I sure will, man. I'll shoot you a text. All right. Sounds good. All right, man. Good luck with everything, man. You got this. Yeah. We'll talk again. All right, man. See ya. The big question you need to ask yourself every day is, do I own a job or do I own a business? And unfortunately, the majority of contractors out there own a job. That's right. They're a slave to their own business. But the other side of the fence is so much greener. It's so much better. And that's when you're finally fully in control of your destiny, your freedom, your time. And that's what Contractor Secrets is about. It's about taking back our time, building a business with systems, standards, values, procedures, putting yourself in the driver's seat. And that's what it's about. So I'm excited. I'm happy to have you here. Let's dive into the Contractor Secrets Podcast. Drip Jobs CRM is finally here. That's right. So Drip Jobs is an automation platform for contractors, home service professionals. It's going to automatically follow up with your customers. It's going to allow you to send invoices, estimates. It's going to allow you to send out blast marketing emails to individuals based on where they are in the buying process. This software is next level. And I'm reaching out to you. You're a listener of this podcast, and I want you to be one of the first ones to give it a shot. So if you want to see what Drip Jobs can do for your business, 
I'd love for you to head over to dripjobs.com, sign up for a free demo and get your team involved and let us sit with you and show you how powerful this software is. It's going to save you time. It's going to make you money and you're going to love the features that are built into drip jobs. So if you want to check it out, head over to dripjobs.com and we will give you first priority being a podcast listener uh, to be one of the very first to try out drip jobs in your home service business. I'm super excited to share that with you and I'll catch you on the next episode.